just took off the perpetual soloist d-string um, as far as I know at the time of this recording there's only been one gauge of the soloist d-string um, and it's pretty thin it's one of the thinnest d-strings that I've ever used sorry for all the ASMR critical crackle so like I was saying Perpetual Soloist D is the thinnest D string I've ever used. It was quite a shock coming to this D string as far as its gauge goes um, on the heels of playing. Sorry, I apologize for the package noise. On the heels of playing the Olive Light D string. Because the thing is, I chose these gauges for a specific reason. This D-string has a 14 kilogram tension, and that's exactly the same as the Olive Light Gauge D-string, which I had on previous to this. So I was choosing these perpetual steel strings because I could get that equivalent gauge, and it just seemed like a darker sound to these strings, and that's kind of the performance I wanted, was a darker steel string with tensions more similar to my gut setups I had been using. So let's run through the equivalent strings that are on the market. This is 14 kilogram tension. Uh, like I said, same as the Olive Light D string. Um, about the same as the Larson Original Medium D string, which is 13.9 kilogram tension. It's almost the same as the Larson Il Canone um, D strings, which is 14.1 kilogram tension. Exactly the same as the Yargar Classic Medium D-String, which is the D-String that I used to use for a really long time, and exactly the same as the Kaplan Medium D-String, also a D-String I used for a number of years. So same tension as two of the D-Strings that I've used the most on this cello. So 14 kilogram tension scene, well, as three of the D-Strings I've used the most on this cello, which is kind of crazy. So that 14 kilogram tension seems to be a pretty good sweet spot for my instrument. We'll see though as we change to the Yargar Superior D um, because I'm going from a really thin D string to one of the thickest steel D strings that I've ever put on this cello. Um, it is 14.7 uh, kilogram tension stronger than the MagnaCore Strong D-String. I mean, let that sink in. Stronger than the MagnaCore Strong D-String. So that's pretty thick, right? And um, it's the same as the tension pretty much as the Olive Medium Gauge, uh, which is 14.6 kilogram tension. Keep in mind that Olive String, these are, that's a gut string and much thicker, but um, similar tension feel. So sometimes the, the gut, the like all of string tensions are closer to steel strings than you think. Um, but they certainly don't play like steel strings or sound like steel strings. But that's the whole point of those all of strings is to be a little bit more in the ballpark tension wise of the steel strings that still have that really amazing gut sound and response. All right. Here we go, let's clean things up a little bit. You'll have to let me know in the comments what you think of my setup madness videos. Too much yapping, not enough celloing, you'll have to let me know. But kind of uh, gives me, an, I like the setup thing, it gives me an opportunity to tell you different things that I like or don't like about the strings or kind of casual, informal chat about it. And again, I apologize for this horrendous video angle that you guys are seeing right now. No one's supposed to see the back side of this studio. But I'll get that sorted. So it'd be really amazing if the tension of this D-string 
is still like easy enough to press down the fingerboard. That's the only thing I'm worried about. I don't want to kill my fingers and my wrist here. Yeah, that's almost like a G-string. That is... It looks... It's at least as thick as the Cadenza G-string. It might be a tiny bit thicker, actually. But again, the, the Cadenza strings are low tension, and they are actually the thinnest... G and C strings I've ever had on this cello. So we're going from thinner strings to much thicker strings for this next steel setup. But you know, with that thickness comes tone, a lot more tone. And um, that's kind of one of the things I'm missing with steel strings is tone. So this um, confirms something that I I was feeling year, uh, years ago. When I first switched from steel strings over to gut strings, I first tried the Eudoxa strings from Pure Astro. And it made, though, the tone of those strings made sense on my cello because the I was so used to the sound of the Yargar A and D string on my instrument. And the Eudoxa strings sound very similar to the Yargar strings in their tone. Um, so I think that's kind of cool. Like the Yargar strings are one of the early steel strings that we still have today. Eudoxa strings were kind of like... Uh, the Eudoxa strings are early 20th century wound gut strings that are polished really smooth. It's cool that those sound, you know, similar in tone. So what I'm noticing is a little more subtlety in the superior strings. They have a little, you know, I, they've got a little bit of sparkle, but they're not crazy um, textured like I thought they might be uh, they're a little warmer which I like I don't mind that I do think that the A string got a little more nasally with the superior D string on
actually a pretty big fan so far. Yes. So the tone, surface tone is a little more similar to the gut sound. These are pretty close to the Eudaxas, actually, which is awesome. Because I love the Eudaxa sound on my instrument. I also like the Yager, so Yager sound, but this is even better than the classic for my cello. Easier to press down for me. that subtlety that I was missing from the perpetual D and A string, actually. So, uh, fits my style a little better. fuzzy there on the D string. That sounds nice with that Baroque stick with the black hairs.
So, I think actually this is a really nice combo. The Cadenza G and C string from Perpetual, uh, Pure Astro Perpetual Soloist with the Yargar Superior Medium A and D. They sound really nice together and they respond good together. So, um, this is a potential uh, combo I might stay with because they're responsive. Like the Cadenza G and C are very snappy and have a little bit still um, a higher, uh, the tone that reaches in the higher end. They're not powerhouse bass heavy strings. That's one of the only issues is I don't get a big bass sound from the instrument. Um, but there's times and places for each of those kinds of sounds, depending on your group or depending on the function of your role in the ensemble. You know, So if I'm playing only lead lines, it's nice to not have to have as bassy of a sound. It helps you cut through it with a, th a little thinner bass tone. Um, but if I need to be the really heavy bass line sort of player in the group, then I would want to switch to a different um, low string set. <laughs> Like a like a broken in Eudoxa D string. It doesn't even sound like a new one. It sounds like a, a little bit fuzzy. What some people might say dull, but a little bit fuzzy kind of sound, which is cool. So I think that um, the new A and D string. brightness and sparkle back to the cadenza C and G strings. Just a little bit. I definitely like the tone of the G and C string, the cadenza G and C string, with this bow better with the superior A and D on. <laughs> some of that uh, a little more bassiness. fine tuner mechanism was off just when I recorded just now so it wasn't quite the accurate picture of the D string it was a little too fuzzy and that was because the screw wasn't connected to the fine tuner mechanism to the arm of the fine tuner so <laughs> That's the good news. strings again. D string sounds even better. Um, I'm even more happy with how that sounds. Easy to play. And it's still got the 
softness and the warmth, but a little more strength now. And core. It was missing the core sound before. Here's the open strings again. together the D and the G string so that D and the A strings sound even more like kind of similar to that kind of eudoxa tone that I like um, more so than the classic Yargar DNA. strings and for the A string you know you can feel real solid right there down by the bridge you can hear the warm almost fuzzy feeling stick black hairs on the cadenza scene G so much better with the superior A and D strings on there.
stops of a first finger on the A and the D string with these this setup. <laughs> so I might just leave it like this because honestly I know that those Larson strings are pretty thick and darker and smoother in their tone and there's a little bit just enough extra bass coming from the cadenza oh, excuse me there's a just enough extra bass coming from the cadenza c and g but still the springiness and the quickness of response and the tone i think will work for what i'm working on so i might leave it for today and um, record with it as is. easier to play stuff like that with the superior A and D so I'm happy I'm sticking with those for a little while I'm probably going to try out the C and G string at some point because um, that would be sweet if I can just do a if, whenever you can just do a complete set of one string makes the life a lot easier that's for sure don't have to worry about mixing and matching stuff so, I'm liking that sound. That's a good sound for the instrument. Um, I already know that the Larson C string is a kind of, the heavy gauge OG is kind of a beast and it doesn't respond as quick as these strings. And then I get a little bit more of the snappy and brightness from the cadenza strings. The G string uh, and C string, G string is really smooth for the Larson. So, but I'm liking this combo, it's a pretty good combo so far. <laughs> 